Hey guys, I'm HJG White from eToro and this week we are going to be talking about the upcoming earnings release of Warner Brother Discovery. This week I wanted to do something slightly different which is a video before the earnings release to give you guys a bit of an idea of the preparation I do before an earnings release. It's vitally important that you set some expectations. Otherwise, you are just going to perpetually see the positives in the stock every earnings release. Honestly, it is so super easy to do this. So this is a really important part of investing. There are two quarters that matter on this earnings release, which is Q1 2024, the last quarter, and Q2 2023, which is this quarter last year. And the three things that I'm going to be looking for in this earnings release are cash and debt, revenues, and free cash flow. Let's begin with debt. Long-term viewers of this channel will know that I have built a hyper-accurate debt model of Warner Brothers Discovery's debt, all of their debt payments, national and interest, and there'll be a link to that in this video also, right in the description. Now, what we do know already is in this quarter, Warner Brothers Discovery have upped their debt tender offer, their offer to purchase back their debt off the bank to almost $3 billion. Now, this is great because it will also reduce our interest payments, but I'm not overly concerned with our interest payments. I would like as much of this principal paid off as possible, especially while treasury bonds, T-bills, are at these rates because what that is doing is it's making our debt way cheaper because the banks that are holding our risky debt with, and by the way, all of our debt again is under 5% fixed for the entire duration of the term. None of our debt is variable rate. So the banks that are holding our debt that have say, are getting 4% interest on it, they're gonna sell it to us really cheap right now so that they can take that cash and put it into treasury bills. So it's absolutely brilliant news to hear that Warner Brothers Discovery have upped their debt tender offer to 3 billion. By the way, guys, what this also means is if interest rates go up, that will actually be a positive thing for Warner Brothers Discovery in terms of paying off their existing debt. Now, currently we have around about 10 billion in national debt due over the next five years. And what we also have in the bank is around 3 billion in cash. So adding the cash into this formula is really important because obviously if we spend 1 billion of this cash and we go down to 2 billion, that doesn't really benefit our position. What we want is debt minus cash to go down. So our five-year debt would be 10 billion in debt uh, and 3 billion in cash. And after this quarter, maybe it'll be 9 billion in debt and still 3 billion in cash. Right now, we have 7 billion in debt minus cash. If this went down to 6 billion, that would be really good. If that went down to 5 billion, that would be insane. I would be very, very happy with that. If it dropped to 5 billion, I would potentially pick up more shares right away. Of course, of course, if the business is growing while we are paying off debt, that is obviously ideal. So let's talk about the next important thing for me, which is revenue. All I want to do here, because I'm not expecting, I don't expect to pay off debt and have revenue growth. I think that's an unreasonable thing to expect. Uh, what I want to do is set a floor on where our revenue is this quarter so that I don't have confirmation bias. So something that I think would be an acceptable amount of uh, a revenue hit that is, doesn't represent a big intrinsic issue with the stock itself. So this is where I'm gonna use Q1 2024. Last quarter we had one of the worst things that you can have in investing, which is a revenue reduction, which to be honest is quite common with entertainment stocks. And the reason for this reven uh, revenue reduction is again, another classic one. We had a smash hit in Q1 2023, which was Hogwarts Legacy. And then in Q1 2024, we had Suicide Squad, which was just nowhere near as good, but I don't think anyone really expected Suicide Squad to do as well as Hogwarts Legacy. And you're really not gonna have a Hogwarts Legacy every year. So what we should just be, we should just be grateful for Hogwarts Legacy in, 20, in Q1 2023. We know there'll be another one of those games in maybe three to five years. Um, but yeah, so what we had in the last quarter was one of the worst things that could happen, which is a boom one year and a dud the next. And as a result of that, we had a overall across the entire business, we had a 7% reduction in revenue. 
Now, because Hogwarts Legacy didn't really affect Q2 2023, and there were no major smash hits that I can remember, I did a bit of research, I couldn't see any smash hits in Q2 2023, and I couldn't see any reason for Q2 2024 to be exceptional, uh, I'm not going to be uh, doing much research unless the revenue decline is over 7% then I'm not going to look much into it. So if there's a 7% reduction in revenue, I'm pretty much, I'll, I'll definitely do some research, but that to me, uh, there shouldn't be any reduction in revenue, but that to me would not scream alarm bells. Uh, it would just be a continual continuation from the fact that uh, we had uh, a couple booms last year and this year we just having a couple duds. Now I want to quickly address why we aren't talking about earnings on this stock because earnings are something that we typically care about. Earnings per share are super important things for other stocks. That is not important for this stock. This stock has an absolutely ridiculous earnings per share because it has a lot of paper losses on the balance sheet. And I've had people disagree with me or comment on my videos about depreciation and amortization being important costs. They are for some businesses, but absolutely not for this business. You should definitely consider adding depreciation and amortization back into Water Brother Discovery Stock. And I'm gonna be getting into that in this section. And it is why I have this book on the table. So this is gonna become relevant in just a minute. Generally speaking, free cash flow is actually almost always more important than earnings because free cash flow is the money that the company get to choose to spend. Now, the important thing for Warner Brother Discovery shareholders to know is free cash flow deducts interest because interest is on debt is not an optional thing to spend. So that has already come out of the earnings. However, if we pay off debt early, if we pay down the principal, uh, not only does that mean that we won't have to pay interest on that money later on, it means that that will come out of our earnings. So paying off debt early, debt that was inevitably going to have to be paid, uh, that will come out of our earnings, but it won't have come out of our free cash flow. And I think it's important to look at the free cash flow numbers because we chose to pay off that debt. So that money is still kind of with us. It's all, if you consider the fact that it was already subtracted from us. So if you owed someone $1 billion and you had $1 billion in cash, you would be, your equity would be zero. And if you paid off that $1 billion using the $1 billion in cash, then your equity would still be zero. And so basically, I think it's important to note that free cash flow is something that we've chosen to spend to pay off debt early. And if we needed to, we could use that money to pay interest payments or invest in the business, but we've cho we've chosen to use it to pay off debt. If we needed this money, it would be there to pay interest payments. That's the important thing to remember. And so if we have 7 billion in free cash flow, then we could pay off $7 billion worth of interest payments. So while interest is subtracted from the free cash flow figure, paying off principal payments of debt early is not. So what you're getting in the earnings statistic or the net income statistic is also the money that we use to pay off debt early. Now in Q2 2023, uh, free cash flow was around 3 billion and this was actually up from the previous quarter, the same, uh, the same quarter the previous year. And so I would definitely like to see the free cash flow being the same around 3 billion. I would love to see it go up, but obviously I think a seven to 10% reduction in free cash flow uh, is fine, but I would need to see some further explanation. If it's an even bigger reduction than that, then I'll have to do a lot more research and potentially, you know, this might represent an intrinsic issue in the business. So again, anything above a $3 billion free cash flow statistic is a good thing for me and requires no extra research. If we see a significant increase from $3 billion in free cash flow, let's say we get to $3.5 billion or something like that, then I will genuinely consider picking up some more shares. If we see a $4 billion free cash flow, then I will definitely pick up more shares, provided the other things I've mentioned, particularly debt and cash, uh, provided I've seen what I want to see there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the reason that earnings are so much lower than free cash flow, one of them is paying down the principal of debt, but another thing is depreciation and amortization. This is the biggest asset that Warner Brother Discovery have after the merger that I don't see 
any investors talking about. Over the past 12 months, Warner Brothers Discovery eliminated $7.8 billion from their earnings using depreciation and amortization. This took their earnings on paper from 5 billion in earnings to negative 3 billion. And again, this is a paper loss. This is not a real loss. I actually brought this up a while back in a previous video and someone commented that depreciation and amortization is a real cost. And yes, Charlie Munger would absolutely agree with you there. And I would agree with you. If I was Amazon and I just spent a billion dollars on a million vehicles for my fleet, uh, I know that in 10 years time, I'm going to have to replace those vehicles. So I'm losing about 100 million a year on these vehicles. And so I will put on my balance sheet that I am losing this money. I wouldn't put that I've lost a billion in one year. I'd say every year I've lost 100 million. However, let's compare this made up 1 billion investment into a fleet of vehicles for Amazon to an actual real world purchase of Channel 5 in Boston for $450 million. Channel 5 in Boston, when it was set up, they spent $1 million on a tower for the offices. They spent about 25 grand on the licensing so that they could broadcast. And they spent another $1 million on the studio. Overall, they had about $2.5 million of assets, real estate and licensing. And these assets are what's called its book value. Now, when Channel 5 in Boston got sold, it got sold for $450 million. So first of all, it had an insane price to book value. It's one of the reasons I think that book value is perhaps one of the most useless statistics in the whole of the financial world. Because Channel 5 in Boston would have had a 180 book value when it sold for 450 million. And that means absolutely nothing as to how valuable it was. Balance sheet as a $450 million asset. Suddenly this asset adds $450 million to this new company's book value because that's how much they paid for it. That is the actual value, the actual price of those assets. So suddenly a company that has a book value of 2.5 million now has a book value of 450 million. But obviously on the tangible assets, the building, uh, is still 2.5 million on the balance sheet. Where they put the rest of the value is in the goodwill section. So this stock would have had around 447.5 million dollars of goodwill. The hilarious thing about goodwill and what you paid for it uh, is that you can depreciate it on your balance sheet. You can take it out of your future earnings because that is what you paid for the business. And you can take as much of it as you like for as long as you need to uh, until you've made that amount of money back in earnings. And so this is a pretty huge asset to have on your balance sheet because you can deduct this goodwill from your earnings. Even if this business goes up in value, obviously in 10 years time, Friends is probably gonna make more money for Warner Brothers Discovery than it does today because of inflation and the fact that people will always want to watch this program. So they'll probably go to any streaming platform or any network that offers this program. So the funny thing is, if you buy an asset, the asset can go up in value and you can still depreciate it on your balance sheet. So if you want to see what Warner Brothers Discovery believe they paid for above the value of the assets for the business, then you just need to go to the goodwill section. And so in the goodwill section on Warner Brothers Discovery, they have $35 billion of goodwill. That means Warner Brothers Discovery have a bare minimum of $35 billion in tax-free earnings. Now, as I said, depreciation and amortization is a real cost if you've got to replace these cars and stuff like that in the future. But Warner Brothers Discovery are not going to have to replace Lord of the Rings in order to license it to Netflix or Disney+. Plus. So deducting it from their earnings is a bit of a joke. Now, let's talk briefly about the NBA because I don't want to do a whole video on this on its own. Um, and I really don't care that much about the NBA deal, but you guys want to know more about it. It's the thing that everyone is talking about. So let's get into that a little bit. Now, because I don't care that much about the NBA, what I did was I wrote to the investor relations team uh, to get a little bit more information on how losing this deal will affect us financially. Now, the first thing that the investor relations team told me that I didn't even ask about was that we are going to be having the NBA for a whole nother season. So I believe when the point at which it will affect our earnings is when the next season ends, which will be June 2025. So in Q2 
2025, we will still have the MBA on our balance sheet. So in Q2 2024, this isn't going to affect us at all. However, when it does get around to affecting us, the areas that it's going to affect mostly is the network segment. And then also possibly the DTC segment because some of the games are streamed on HBO Max. But this means that our biggest sports streaming platform will already have NBA on there. So we won't need, we won't need to be the ones providing NBA games in order to be getting uh, the customers that subscribe to NBA sports. Now, we will lose a bit of revenue as a result of that, but we might still get those customers. The way that some of the payments are worked is basically there will be advertising on each of the channels on Venu. And so if someone is watching an NBA game on Disney Channel on Venu, I don't exactly know if there will be, it will be split into channels, but essentially if someone's watching Disney programming and there's an advert on it, well then Disney will get that advertising revenue. But if there is a subscriber on the platform that is on there because potentially of the NBA being on there, we will all split that subscription revenue. Now, the next thing I wanted to know was how much was the cost saving? Because what I was seeing online was a lot of articles saying that it was going to save us around $1.5 billion in cost. So I said, how much is going to cost us? And he said that analysts said that it's going to cost us $1.5 billion. So it seems that the numbers that are floating around in the media are reasonably accurate. Now, 1.5 billion is around 3% of our revenue. And so what I wanted to know next was how much is this going to affect our revenue then? This is a really tough one because if someone is subscribed to say uh, a network, you don't necessarily know that they're subscribed to it because of the NBA. Of course, some people are. And same for HBO Max. There's a few games that are broadcast on HBO Max apparently. Uh, you don't know how many subscribers are there because of that game. I think very few. Uh, and so it's a tough, is a very tough thing to price in. But what analysts apparently are predicting is that we are going to break even. For me, if the best estimation is that we're going to break even by losing the NBA, I think it is a fantastic thing that we are letting go of it and especially not paying any more for it. When it comes to assets like Friends and Lord of the Rings, we know we're making our money back from them. So why would we invest 1.5 billion a year into the NBA when the best guess is that we break even on it. What I'd much prefer is a new Lord of the Rings every year. And in the world of streaming and all this subjectivity where you don't really know exactly what it is that someone is paying to be on your platform for, it's a really easy way to just accidentally throw billions away to things that aren't actually that valuable to you. However, if these NBA players really want to make big profits, what they need to do is 